fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Two men rode the trail toward Oakford. One was a young man about 23 named Bert Deming. The other was a small, thin, but wiry man of middle age whose readiness to fight any man of any size, regardless of the possible outcome, had earned him the name of Bantam Hooker. Bantam was talking as usual while they rode along at a leisurely pace. You know, Bert, I always figured you'd stay on the farm after your dad died. Make a good living out of it. With me to help, of course. Talk sense, Bantam. You know as well as I do that we'd never make a go of that farm. Dad left a lot of debts along with it, so I just had to sell to pay off. But you could have tried by Jiminy. Shucks, the minute your dad was in his grave, you sold the place. Yeah, and out of the money I got, I had two silver dollars left. Yeah, I see what you mean, son. You know. But if we land jobs with that uncle of yours near Oakford, we'll make out all right, I reckon. Benham, you were with Dad a long time. Did you ever hear him mention Uncle Hank? Well, now I recollect him saying once that Hank Deming, his brother, was too big for his britches. Wanting to grab all the land he could. And trying to put everybody else out of the cattle business and all. I heard Uncle Hank spread as one of the biggest in the territory. I yeah, reckon that's so. They don't come any bigger than the Bar D down this way. I reckon Dad and my uncle didn't get along together. <laughs> well, you reckon right, son. Seems like your dad started out in partners with his brother Hank, but somehow he got squeezed out of the running. Hmm. I wonder how that happened. You know, Seems your dad didn't pay any attention to the business side of things. Left all that to Hank. Well, there come a day when your dad found out everything, the whole kitten caboodle was in Hank's name. You mean Uncle Hank cheated dad out of his share? Well, seems like they had a showdown about things. So Hank gave your dad a thousand dollars and told him to get out on his own. So your dad got. Fur as I know, they never did write or speak to each other since then. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. What, you, what you stopping for? I got to thinking, Banner. I'm not going to ask any favors of Uncle Hank after he treated Dad that way. Oh, great day, Bert. You've got a right to get all you can from him. He took it all away from your dad, didn't he? Oh, but that thousand dollars... When Uncle Hank finds out who I am, he won't give us work in the bar D anyway. Oh, never thought of that. But... 
Come to think of it, what's to keep us from saying we're just a couple of drifting cowpokes who want a job? He doesn't have to know your name is Deming. Well, that might work. I'd like to go there just to look the place over and uh, to find out more about Uncle Hank. Then we'll go there. It's all settled in. Get up there. Get up there, boy. That evening, Hank Deming sat with his wife, Emma, and his foreman, Alex, at the supper table. Hank, a gruff, hard type of man, was speaking. Well, yes, Senator Alex, if you want to stay on here as foreman, you better do something about getting those ornery misters out of the South Valley like I told you there. Hank, I told you I've tried every way I know to get them out. Yeah. But even threats won't budge them. Hank, I don't blame them. Those small farms are their homes. They're all they have. You don't really have legal title to that land, eh? Now, never mind putting in your two cents, Emma. You had your way, I'd have turned out to be a soft-headed, at a brain fool like my brother Jed. I always liked Jed. I was sorry when you broke up with him. Yes. Maybe you should have married him instead of me, eh? No use to talk like that, Hank. But I would like it if you'd be a little easier with folks, that's all. I never knew you had a brother, Hank. Yeah, I did want you. You thought he ought to own half a bar, D. So I gave him a thousand dollars and told him to clear out his own. I don't know what happened to him, Sid. I've often wondered. It's been so many years. Well, just forget, Jed. Right now, I'm interested in getting those nesters out of the valley, like I said. Just how do you aim to go about it? I told you to do it. Sure, but you'll have to tell me how. I've done all I can. But I don't know why I keep you on. To be a good foreman, you need a lot more gumption, that's what. Now, Hank, you know Alex has done a fine job ever since he's been here. Ten years come spring. The men get along with him fine. Sure, because he's too easy with them, that's why. Ranch is prospering, Hank. You've got the biggest spread and more cattle than anyone here about. I'll take the credit for that, not you, Alex. I admit you seem to get the work done right, but lately you seem to be slipping. If you still want me to stay here, you'll have to take me as I am, Hank. I'm not as young as I used to be. Well, boy, Sunday, you'll have to perk up if you're going to get those nesters out. I say go over there and tell me. Yeah. There's a couple of hombres riding toward the ranch house. Mm-hmm. Better go see what they want. Come on, Alex. I'm right with you, Hank. Hey, good evening, strangers. What brings you to the bar, D? Uh, are you Mr. Deming? Yes, I am. So you're Hank Deming, eh? Reckon I should have known that right off. What do you want here? We thought maybe you could use a couple extra hands here at the bar, D. My name's Bert, and he's called Bantam. We sure heard a lot about you, Mr. Deming. Uh, uh, Alex, you talk to him. You think he can use him? Put him on. I'm going to finish my supper. Well, do we get jobs? I could use this young fella right well, but... But what? By Jiminy, I can ride herd and rope calves with the best of them. Ain't that so, Bert? Bantam's a good worker, mister, and we'd like to be together if he can use both of us. Well, I'll try both of you for a spell and see what you do. We'll both do a good job, and thanks a lot. Yeah, go back and leave your horses in the corral, then eat with the boys. I'll meet you at the bunkhouse and show you where you're to bed down. Right now, I'm going back and finish my supper, too. We're sure mighty thankful to you. Let's put up the horses, Bert. While Bert and Bantam were talking to Hank and Alex at the Bar D, two other horsemen rode the trail that followed a ridge along the South Valley. They were the Lone Ranger and Toto. The masked man pointed to the small farms in the valley and spoke. I understand Hank Deming, who owns a Bar D, is trying to get those farmers out of the valley. Well, mean trouble if he decides to use force, Tonto. Ah, and if not good, farmers needed in West, same as cattle ranchers. Deming doesn't need that valley. But once he sets his mind on something, he rarely changes. Deming have right to land in valley, Kimasabi? Well, once it was part of his holdings, Tonto. But he paid no attention when the farmers settled there some time ago. Now they claim squatter's rights to the land. We hear Hank Deming, plenty hard feller. Yes, he is. Lately, he's been making threats against those farmers. But they're determined to stay. Plenty trouble comes soon, maybe. We'll camp in the hills nearby in case it does. Ah. The sun is setting, so we'll head for that grove over there. Come on, Bill. Come up, scout. That 
night, the rancher Hank Deming entered the bunkhouse at the Bar D where the foreman and the men were lounging. Eric, see. I've done some thinking about those nesters in the valley. Frankly, there isn't much can be done about them. Yes, sure is. And I'm going to see that it is done. They're going out of that valley. I reckon you're talking about the small farmers who have places in the valley. That's right, yeah. Adam. I reckon they got a right to make a living like anybody else. Yeah. You were that weasoned up new hand Alex was soft enough to take on a while ago, aren't you? All I said was they got a right to live. Keep quiet, Bantam. You have no right to butt in. <laughs> well, it's under for a run, so you've got a lot of gumption anyway. I'll forget what you said. <clears throat> I had to get back to what I was saying. Alex, those nesters are going to leave South Valley. We're not putting it off any longer. Not putting off what, Hank? Making things so tough for them, they'll be glad to leave, that's what. Just how do you figure on doing that? I'll tell you how it's going to be done. Those nesties have that valley laid out sort of like a town. The fences border on the trail that runs through the valley like a main street. Now, those fences are mighty weak. I've noticed that. Now, here's what we're going to do. At dawn, I want you to round up about a thousand head of cattle... Then we'll drive them down that narrow trail between the fences. Great day, Hank. They'll bust through those fences and spread out all over the place. That's right. Excuse me, Mr. Deming. But if the cattle do break through those fences, they'll overrun the farmland and ruin the crops before we can round them up again. That's exactly what I'm counting on. Maybe after that happens, those nesters will decide it ain't no use fighting Hank Deming. Hank, never. That's a low, dirty trick. Eh? If I was one of them farmers, I'd use a rifle and shoot down as many of them steers as I could before you did round them up again. Yeah. They did that. They could have the law on him. We have the right to drive cattle along that trail. Nobody ever does. Then we'll be the first. Ain't our fault if the fences don't hold. By Jiminy, as far as I... You shut up. Now, if there's anyone here who don't want to follow orders, he'd better grab his gear and quit right now. You all understand that? Good. Now, uh, rouse them out of dawn, Alex. When you got the cattle ready to move, let me know. Now go along to help drive them. That's all I got to say. A few minutes after Hank left the bunkhouse, Bert signaled to Bantam, and the two men sauntered out into the moonlight. They walked to the corral where Bert leaned against the fence as he spoke. Bantam, I, I sure can't believe an uncle of mine would do what Uncle Hank is planning to do to those farmers in the morning. <laughs> After the way he treated your dad, Hank Deming would be expected to do most anything. He's sure a mean one. So I'm finding out. I wish there was something we could do to spoil his plan. Now, now the least we can do is to warn the farmers, Bert. If they know what to expect, they might be able to stop him. Well, that's true. Let's saddle our horses and ride to South Valley. Won't take long. All right, if we tell one of the farmers, he can tell the others. Come on, let's get going. Since the night was bright and warm, the Lone Ranger and Toto decided that they'd investigate the valley. They rode from their camp and moved along the trail that headed into the valley. As they rounded a bend, a shot over their heads caused them to pull rain sharply. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. Shot come from behind Big Boulder. Yes, I know. Reach, both of you, and keep reaching. All right, Doozy says, Tonto. Uh, All right, now show yourself. Oh, 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 oh. We got you covered. Why, Jiminy Bird, it's a masked armory and an Indian. So I see, Bantam. They're probably here as part of Uncle Hank's plan to get rid of the farmers. My Uncle Hank? Do you mean Hank Deming? Oh, that's right. I reckon he'd go so far as hiring a couple of outlaws to help do his dirty work. We're not outlaws. If Hank Deming is your uncle, you must be Jed Deming's son. Well, say, how come you know my father's name? I knew him, and I know the treatment he received in the past from Hank. The only way you know all that is because Hank told you, mister. That means you are working for him. And I'm giving you two minutes to take. tell why you came here, or you'll get a bullet. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue. While riding to investigate the valley in which the small farmers lived, the Lone Ranger and Tonto were stopped on the trail by Bert Deming and Bantam Hooker, who faced the masked man and Indian with drawn guns. Bantam was inclined to believe they were hired by Hank Deming to move against the farmers, and he gave the Lone Ranger two minutes to give an explanation. The masked man smiled, then spoke. <laughs> I never met you before, Bantam, but Bert's father told me about you. I know you mean well. He knows your name, Bantam. No matter. Even if he got mad, he couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> Him not know Lone Ranger very well. What? <laughs> Ray, today, did you... Did you say the Lone Ranger? Not right. Hi, Jimmy Birch, your dad told us about him. The mask, the white stallion and all. Yeah. Doggone, mister, you just keep smiling. I'll put up my gun pronto. Well, why didn't somebody tell me sooner? Uh, I'll holster my gun, too. Well, dad told us how fast you are in the draw, mister. Well, thanks. Tom and I are used to getting out of tight situations. Isn't that right? Gosh, it's sure great to meet you. Uh, in fact, uh... I can't think of anyone I'd rather meet right now. Bert, from a few of your remarks, it seems your uncle is planning to move against the farmers in this valley. Yep, that's just what he's doing. Bert and I figured on warning him. Are you living with your uncle? But Dad died a few weeks ago. I decided to look up Uncle Hank after I sold our place. At Bantam and I arrived this afternoon and got jobs at the Bar D. Nobody there knows I'm Bert Demi. I see. And you don't approve of your uncle's attitude toward the farmers? Nope. I figure they have a right to make a living. I'm glad you feel that way about it. Uh, what is your uncle planning to do? Briefly, Bert told the Lone Ranger what Hank Deming planned the following morning. The masked man and Tonto listened intently. When Bert had finished, the Lone Ranger thought a moment, then spoke. Something will have to be done to stop Deming from carrying through such a plan, Bert. Well, that's what we think. We decide to warn the farmers, hoping they could do something. All right. You and Bannum go to each of the farmers. The trail between the fences through the valley is only about 50 feet wide. Isn't that right? Maybe he's just talking won't do anything. But just in case he does start the cattle drive, I've thought of a plan you may suggest to the farmers. It'll prevent the herd from entering the valley for the time being. And give us a chance to discuss the situation with Hank Deming. Now listen carefully. Bert and Bantam talked to the farmers that night, telling each of them about the Lone Ranger's plan. Then they returned to the bunkhouse. At dawn the following morning, the cowhands at the Bar D spread went out to the range and started a herd of about a thousand head of cattle toward the entrance to the valley. Bert and Bantam rode with Alex and a few men in the lead, while Hank Deming and some of the others rode behind the cattle. When they approached the entrance to the valley trail, the herd stopped and Alex, accompanied by Bert and Bantam, rode back to talk to Hank. Hank, we can't go on. Wait a minute. The nest has put a string of big farm wagons across the entrance to the valley trail. Eh? The wagons blocked the way. That's right. The farmers are there waiting near the wagon. Looks like they found out what was going on somehow. Well, boys, we'll see about this. Come on. Get up there. Get up there. Come on, come on. Within a few moments, Hank and the others drew rain near the wagons which blocked the way. Hey, you nesties. Move those wagons out of there, Prado, or we'll move them for you. Don't try it, Deming. You do, there'll be plenty of shooting. You got no reason to drive that herd through the valley. You're doing it just so as to ruin our crops. You know those weak fences on either side of the trail won't hold. I don't have to tell you my reason for taking cattle through there. That's an open trail. And by Sunday, we've gone through. we would better do something soon, Hank. Cattle are beginning to mill around and get restless. Get the men and pull those wagons out of there, Alex. The first cowpoke who lays a hand on those wagons gets a bullet. We better turn the herd back, Hank. If shooting starts, anything might happen. Alex is right, Mr. Demi. You Demi. keep out of this, young fella. Alex, if you haven't gumption enough to take the men and pull away those wagons, I'll do it myself. Follow me, men. Oh, Maybe I warned you. The first one to touch one of those wagons gets land. You'd better not use your guns. All right, the rest of you, grab a hold and help me. Oh, stop him. Hold it. Don't grease my hand. Hold oh, 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 it. He saved Hank's life. Today. I don't know why an outlaw should save my life. He's a friend, Mr. Deming, believe me. And if he and the Indian are friends, they'll help us get these wagons away. We're not going to help you bring ruin to the farmers, Deming. In that case, 
Get out of here and mind your own business. I make it my business to see that the rights of all men are respected, Deming. That small valley means little to you. Yet you're determined to drive a dozen families from their homes, thus to prove your power. Cattle, plenty restless. Not not good. Ellis, take Bert, Phantom, and a few of the others and ride behind the herd. Try to keep them milling till we're ready to drive them through. All right, Hank. Come on. Let's go, fellas. Get up. Now the rest of you, grab your guns. Some of you help me move the wagons while the others cover those ornery nesters. And throw lead if necessary. Now we'll move those wagons. Don't let them move the wagons. We farmers have our rights. Show we mean business. Wait. The cattle are stampeding back toward the range. Mr. Danny, look right over the slope back there, right in the way of the herd. Huh? It's my way of him, eh? Get it back. Get it. Get it. Get it. Hank, with the Lone Ranger and Tonto, raced alongside the big herd, hoping to outdistance the frenzied cattle and try to help Hank's wife. The Lone Ranger and Tonto passed Hank and were soon galloping to one side of the leaders of the herd. They saw the woman on horseback who had stopped in alarm, then had started her horse to one side in hopes of reaching safety. Come on, Silver! That's the big fella! Get him up! Scout! Suddenly, they saw the woman's horse stumble. Though it didn't fall, she seemed to grab the saddle, losing the reins, which fell forward over the horse's head and hung loose. The horse, terrified, stepped on the trailing reins, then stomped in a circle as she tried frantically to reach for them. Woman, drop reins! Cattle soon reach horse! They may not be able to... Look, fellow! Ah! Young fellow Bert, go to help, woman. They still won't make it unless we swerve the herd away from them. Use your guns, Tuttle. Fire over the cattle's head. Ah. They're swerving. Enough to give Bert and the woman a chance. Come on, fill it there. The masked man and Indian saw Bert reach Mrs. Deming, grab the reins of her horse, and start leading him off to the side. The stampeding herd had swerved just enough so that the young man and the woman escaped with only a few feet to spare. Bert and Mrs. Deming pulled to a stop as the cattle thundered past. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, that, that was so brave of you. You saved my life. Well, if the cattle hadn't swerved like they did, ma'am, we... We'd have been done for, I reckon. Oh, no, 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 no. Bert, what a very brave thing you did. Isn't that right? I missed me. He's a good friend, ma'am. In fact, he and the Indian caused the cattle to turn away far enough to give us a chance. Oh, there. Oh, oh, oh. Give me. Oh, you're all right. Great deal when I show hey, you up this here. young man, Bert, saved my life. What? The masked man and Indian did their part, too. Deming your trouble with the farmers almost brought about your wife's death. You yes, say... I know, I know. Let it happen, Daddy. Well, thank heaven it didn't. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you, sure, Mrs. Demon, too late to be of any help. I sure thought she was a corner. If it hadn't been for Bert, she might have been, too. I told you, Hank Deming, this would lead to bad trouble. Might have been worse if you went through that valley with a herd. That's right, Bantam. It might have. Well, those nesters had no right to stand up and give me like they did. <laughs> Still stubborn as a mule. Even after the masked man saved your life and Bert saved your wife. Uh, listen, you sort of runt, no hand of mine. Is you got to... that wrong, Mr. I quit, and I bet Bert does too. <laughs> Easy to see, his dad must have inherited all the good traits of the Deming family, and you got all the bad ones. Then them don't talk so much. Hey, wait a minute. Miss, what did you mean by that remark, man? What's Bert got to do with the Deming? Bert is Jed Deming's son, but Hank. What? He's your nephew. How wonderful. Oh, Hank, to think we never even knew. Is Jed right, son? And my brother Jed is your dad? Was is the word, Uncle Hank. Dad died a few weeks ago. Yeah. Oh, Jed. Oh, Hank, just think our own nephew's a hero. Remember, he saved my life. Well, I'll be doggone. I'd never have taken Bert to be a demon. Hey? Alex, what do you mean by that? Why should you? You know as well as I do, Hank, what Alex means. Sure. Well, that's what everybody thinks of me, eh? That I'm mean and stubborn. Hank, you really aren't so bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you what. Maybe I'm getting soft with the years. Maybe the happenings here today have made me see things more clearly. 
At any rate, I feel different right now about those nesties. Maybe what the masked man said after he saved my life about them having rights helped change me. You still want to get them out of the valley? Well, leave it up to my nephew. After all, he'll own part of the ranch someday. What about a bird? Give them deeds to their land. Let them stay, Uncle Hank. That's what I'd like. All right. That's what we'll do, Bert. You won't regret your decision, Hank. You'll find it worthwhile to live in peace with your neighbors. Friendliness and cooperation help to build and strengthen the far west. Yes, that's right. Oh, Hank, the masked man is so right. Hunter and I will be on our way now. Adios and good luck. Adios. Adios. There's, there's something about that mask, hombre, that makes a man feel better for meeting him. He's kind, brave, and a believer in the right of every American to live and have liberty and happiness. Like it says in our Constitution. He sure stuck up for them farmers. Gee, just who is that masked man, Bert, do you know? Well, Dad told me about him some time ago, Uncle Hank. That mask, Omri, is the Lone Ranger. Feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.